I want you to take a minute to travel back with me in time. We're going to go back thousands of years now. Way, way back, all the way to ancient Judea. And as we arrive and we look around where we are, we can see off in the distance the city of Jerusalem, still new, the great temple still standing, and we can hear thousands of voices that are praying and the sacrifices going on in the great temple. And as we look around ourselves, what we can see in all directions, for as far as we can see, are thousands of structures built by families that have come from all over the country to celebrate this week with us. This is the holiday of Sukkot. This holiday, weirdly enough, is more important in the Torah than Yom Kippur, which doesn't even get mentioned, or Passover, Pesach, or Shavuot. This is the big one. When you read in the Torah the word Chag, more often than not, they're talking about Sukkot. In fact, weirdly enough, it's built into our, our culture in ways we don't even recognize sometimes. When we are finished with the Shema, we all sing a song that goes, Ufros aleinu sukkat sholamecha. Spread over us your sukkah of peace. This is a spiritual time when we can gather together under a shelter to celebrate the year that's gone past, the year that is in the process of arriving, and all of the good things that are between those two spots. So I'd like to invite you to join my family and I as we celebrate Sukkot tonight. Ooh. 
Okay, well, Baruch Haba, everybody. Um, it's the evening of Sukkot, Erev Sukkot. We're coming up on Shabbat. Wanted to welcome you all in our Sukkah, which uh, I will do a little tour of later. We'll do a little video to sort of show you what it looks like. We together built it, which was a lot of fun, um, out of natural materials from our backyard. So we had a great time doing that. And uh, hopefully you have got your prayer books. My lovely wife, my mom, um, and again, Baruch Haba'a, it's nice to have you all joining us tonight. So if you have your prayer books, we're going to start on page one with the uh, blessings over the candles. And Sharon, can you uh, light the candles and we'll do these together? Now, because this is Arab Shabbat, we're going to include the part in the prayers where we say things like Shabbat Vishel. So, just so you know. Oh, all right. Finn's going to light them then. Oh, she's going to do it. That match was going to burn my fingers off. All right. So, Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kitshanu B'Mitzvotah, Vitzivanu Lahad Likner, Shel Shabbat V'Shel Yom Tov. Okay, so we're going to do the uh, Kiddush now. Um, and so we'll start with the uh, the basic Kiddush. So, Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Borei Peri HaGafen Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Bachar Banu Manu mekol ashon vekid shanu b'mitz botav vatiten lanu Adonai Eloheinu b'ahava moadi simcha chagim uzmanim v'sason et yom chag hasalkot hazeh zman simcha tenu. Mikra Kodesh, Zecher Letziach Mitzrayim, Ki Banu Bacharta, Biochanu Ki Dashta, Mikol Amim. Veshavat Umoatei, Kachecha Besimcha Uvesason, In Chaltanu. Baruch atah Adonai, Mekadesh v'Shabbat v'Yisrael v'Hazmanim. For Sukkot, I'm going to play a happy Jewish dance of Freilach, which you can dance to, clap to, hum along. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, we are now <laughs> on the top, of, well, in the middle of page three. As we all do together, the blessing for the sukkah, and as it's getting dark, we're starting to get to the point where we'll start seeing stars. So, Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kitshanu Mitzvotav, Vitzivanu L'Shev Basukah. I'll sit in the sukkah now together and thank you all again for joining us. And we're now on the top of page four as we do the Shehechianu. <laughs> Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shehechianu Vehiyamanu Vehiyianu Lazman Hazer here is the happy song, Sena Sena. Come on out and rejoice and party. <laughs> Okay, this is the part where we're going to do the blessing over the Arba Minim, the four species. And um, I'll take a break in a second here to share a little bit about how that works so that you can kind of see it close up. Uh, just like earlier, we did a little breakout where I talked a little bit about the holidays. So we're going to do the uh, prayer right now just so you can hear it. So it is Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher and then we would shake it and you'll see how we do that in a minute. Okay, so the lulav and the etrog represent four different species of plants that were found in ancient Judea. But more importantly, a lot of rabbis feel that they represent sort of a community together. How does that work? Well, you've got these different parts that all have different natures to them that sort of speak to what people are like. So over here, you've got the aravot, right? The willow twigs. Now, they're pretty, but if you smell them, there's no smell. And if you were to take a bite of them, there'd be no real taste. Or if there was, it wouldn't be a very good one. So what they say is that that taste sort of represents wisdom, right? Chachama. So if you don't have any taste and you don't have any smell, uh, smell being action, then this is somebody who exists in the community, but really just is a part of it. They aren't active in it. They don't really study, but they are a part of the community. Then you've got the Hadassim, the, the uh, myrtle. Now the myrtle, it does have a nice smell, right? But it doesn't have a taste. I wouldn't recommend biting into it. So this might be one who uh, maybe is active, 
like, you know, acts in the community, maybe goes out to protests or acts very, very much in, in pushing forward something that matters, but they don't really study, so there's not a lot of wisdom behind it. Now, the lulav, or the palm branch, at first glance you look at it, it's like, oh, it doesn't smell, it doesn't taste, but it's a palm branch, right? A date palm. So I'm sure you've all eaten a date. They're quite sweet and tasty. And so the point of the lulav itself is that it does have taste. It has a very strong taste, a very sweet taste, but it has no smell. So this might be a scholar who has a lot of wisdom, studies, is trying to be aware of the world, but doesn't act in the world. And finally, you've got the etrog. Now this you, you don't find quite the same thing here. It's a little bit like a lemon, but it's sweeter. And it does smell nice. It smells like, uh, sort of like a lemon, and it has a sweeter taste. So we would say that all of these things stuck together represent an entire community. Now, when we do this, what we do is first the prayer. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher kitshanu b'mitzvotav al natilat lulav. And then we want to be facing east towards Jerusalem. So we're, we're facing east right now. So what we would do is we would shake it three times. And bring it to ourselves. And then we're shaking three times to the south. And we bring it to ourselves and then Three times to the west, three times to the north, to the sky, and to the ground. And that is basically the ceremony with the lulav and the esrog. <laughs> Another thing that a lot of uh, traditional families do now is we welcome special guests, the Ushbizin, which I'll talk a little bit about in a minute. To welcome the Ushbizin into our sukkah, um, you can see we've got some family members who are no longer with us in the living world, but we want to welcome their spirits in. So, Ushbizin is an Aramaic word. It means guests, and it traces back a long ways to our original tradition of Hachnasat Orchim, welcoming guests. It, it finds its roots in the Torah, where Abraham used to sit in front of his tent and wait for strangers who were traveling the roads to come by, and he would invite them in for a very elaborate meal and look after their needs. That's where the whole story with the three angels and, and Sarah finding out about her child comes from. So it was in our culture, but in the 13th century, the Zohar, which was a Kabbalistic work, wanted to reinvigorate things and suggested that when you came into that sukkah, that canopy of faith, you might want to invite the Shekhinah, maybe a force of some sort, somebody to represent that spirit of knowledge and wisdom from our past. And so they suggested, well, traditional spiritual guests might be Abraham or Isaac or Jacob or Joseph or Moses or Aaron or David, one for each of the seven days maybe. But then over time, people said, well, wait a minute, what about the matriarchs? Uh, the patriarchs are good, but they're, they're matriarchs too. So what about Sarah or Miriam or Deborah or Abigail or Hannah or, or uh, Huldah or, or, or Esther? They're spiritual. They bring something too. And in recent years, many, many people have said, well, what about those who matter to us personally? And so in recent years, many families, and ours included, will bring in pictures of family members who have, you know, left us or no longer with us, but that we want to bring back in spirit because they've inspired us. And so this is the spirit of the Ushbizin. It's the idea that we can bring them in and have them as our guests this evening. So, um, if you'll all join me on the top of page five as we read, Eternal, Eternal God, God, spread over us Sukkot Shlomecha, your shelter in peace, surround us with your radiance, and open our hearts that we may feel your abundance. 
let there be food and drink for all who hunger and thirst. To this meal we summon sublime guests, our symbolic companions in this festival meal. Welcome Abraham and Sarah. May we be strengthened by your spirit of adventure and by the courage of your convictions. And finally, since this is a sukkah, we're going to have our meal in here. You're not going to be here for most of it, though you will get to see us have our challah with the uh, honey. So we're going to just do the prayer over the bread to uh, start the meal, and we'll also get those <laughs> candles lit again, because, of course, we're outside. Um, we're we're, we're, we're uh, dealing with the air, so you don't have to. So... Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Hamotzi lechem min haaretz. Amen. Um, Nana, you want to take a first piece and dip in the honey? pass it around. So while we're having our hala and we'll be uh, having our meal and thinking of all of you, we hope that you have a wonderful Sukkot. We hope that the next seven days are blessed and that we uh, will uh, hear that you have a wonderful Shemini Yatzeret and a wonderful um, Simcha Torah and a wonderful New Year. So bye-bye from all of us.